Kevin. Thank you so much for inviting me to this. And uh, thank you so much for everyone attending. I hope you will enjoy this uh, session. Um, so we're going to talk about testers and our, how we label ourselves. But uh, I'm just going to present myself first so you know who you are listening to. Uh, my name is Henrik Anderson. I'm a founder and a consultant at House of Test Consulting. I live in Sweden, just at the bottom end of Sweden. Sweden is very long, um, next to Denmark actually. And uh, I'm a member of Association of Social Testing, member of Context School of Driven, uh, Context School of uh, Software Testing, and uh, I'm a PSL graduate from Jerry Weinberg, Problem Solving Leadership class, and uh, continuously uh, try to uh, attend the A-Way Amplify Your Effectiveness Conference in Phoenix November each year. I strongly recommend it to everyone, and as also I present at various conferences every now and then. I will have a presentation at the Eurostore this year, will be about uh, implementing exploratory testing at the large organization. Uh, it will be how, about how I introduced exploratory testing champions to m maximize the uh, implementation effort, how to speed up implementation of exploratory testing and still continue with uh, normal processes uh, so we don't interrupt and interfere too much with the normal way of working at, at an organization. Uh, I will also encourage anyone to ask questions during this presentation, and uh, doesn't necessarily have to be questions. If you just have comments, you object to what I say, you have a different standing, please write it down in the Q&A form, and uh, I will read it up. I, I think that would benefit this presentation a lot. Also, before I begin, I would strongly recommend uh, a blog post that was uh, up just uh, a week ago or so from Pradeep Surajin. He's uh, test or tested is his uh, blog post. He actually touching this uh, subject in a very good way, I think, and uh, if you want to read more, go to test or tested and uh, read, read a really good post. But enough of of me right now, and uh, let's get this party going. So, who are you? I, I see when I, I come across testers and then I read on my LinkedIn network, and I go to conferences, I meet people in my daily work, I get business cards, I get this um, variation of testers that are out there and uh, we all call ourselves so many different uh, things uh, and I started to question myself and asking uh, why why is that so we have a just to start off a bit, little poll here what kind of tester are you over here please uh, just uh, go ahead and uh, make a choice because see what what the audience is, is looking like. So we're now close to the poll and uh, we see that many of you are calling yourself other things, <laughs> of course, but we also get some variation over here of uh, uh, both in the terms of uh, the Agile exploratory testing, ICQB, and uh, also where we, we could say that it's process, we also have some that are in the uh, domain area like telecom testers. And we have also the 47% that are others, that of course this, this was just a snapshot of what I come, I've come across, uh, and uh, there is lots of other things that we uh, can brand yourself as. So, then you can say, what's, what's my problem with this? Uh, well, why can't we, we, we just go ahead and, and, and uh, show our what, what, we, what is special 
digitalizing. And if we look at this, there's lots of uh, processes of you know, agile and exploratory. We have the the telecom and financial with a domain that domain test, the ICQB certified tester. Uh, I really love the senior tester, uh, let us say senior test or senior consultant. Uh, I, I wonder what that really means, if it means that you're um, really old and then maybe will fade away pretty soon, be buried or something. Because um, it's just worse that actually a professional tester, oh, you have, you get paid for it. Is that what you mean? Uh, so, so there's lots of words that we just throw around here. But still, um, there's some, some things that I, I, I miss from this map over here. And, uh, and that would be the not so sexy ones, the unprofessional tester, or the 100% scripted tester, or the waterfall tester. Well, I guess waterfall is not the latest type right now. So, but a couple of years ago, there was lots of projects, lots of testers working waterfall. Where are those testers right now? Why don't we see people promoting themselves as some of these things? The obvious answer is that this is not the hype. This is not the latest buzz, of course. But my point being is that on the previous slide, we had all the buzzwords that is really big and hype today. What happens when today's bus will be yesterday's news. How many agile testers will we have in, in 10 years, five years or so? How many exploratory testers, ICQB certified testers? All you, the people that are calling themselves this today, where will they go? Will they just change business cards and be the latest hype again? Uh, today I'm on a an agile tester and tomorrow I will be the new mumbo jumbo test or whatever the latest bus will be. Uh, I think what good is this doing to, to our profession and, and what what are we projecting to people uh, that will be hiring us or that we work with. Uh, so what I've done is that I actually divided them into three different categories. We have the process love people, the ones who really are in it for, for uh, promoting us as, as a, 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 a one specific process. We have the team app, exploratory test, ICQB test, agile test that we talked into before. We have the domain love. That's the folks who are into one business. They're really in love and with uh, one type of domain. And, and the, of course, they want to promote themselves as being that specialized in, in these areas. Uh, and then we have the ones I call ego love. That's the ones who say, want to say, I'm better than anyone else. I'm a specialist. I'm professional. I'm senior or superstar. That's the one who, who are comparing. I compare myself to anyone else around me, and I want to say to you that I'm actually better. So these are the three areas I, I intend to walk through. And I will have a talk about each and every one and what, uh, what these things tells me and uh, what, what I see as, as an, have an issue with, what, what I see as a problem with these areas. And again, please uh, ask questions and make comments on what I'm saying. And if, if you have better or other way thoughts of this, Please don't be shy, uh, just state them. So let's move over to the process lab. What, what, what's the big deal about that? I mean, it's really great that you're an agile tester today, right? Because everyone is doing agile. Uh, but looking to me as a tester, uh, looking to me as in, a, in my profession, how I want to develop, are you really sure you want to just promote yourself to being able to, to work in one process? Is that very constraining in uh, my learning abilities or my flexibility as a tester? What, what, what will happen, as I said before, when a process is working and for us lives for so long time? There is a best before date until a new, much uh, cooler process 
uh, is, is up there. If I've been focusing on just one process so much, then what happens when another one comes along? Or how many job opportunities will we actually miss out on just because we brand ourselves within one process? And when another process comes along, I will just be excluded from that job. I think it's very, very limited, not only to my, my learning abilities, also to my career, career uh, abilities. I, I, I'm constraining myself uh, very, very much. Uh, and then I think that's something that we should, should focus on, on, on variety, and in the test of being able to be broad, we're working in several different conditions. We don't want to limit ourselves into to, to one, one context. If we go to the domain level, then there's lots of talk about the domain knowledge, and, and I would be the first to want to recognize, of course, that it, it is important. It is, it does help. But looking at what many people hiring test of, they have domain knowledge up there among the most important things. If you haven't worked in the domain, you are excluded from from. Uh, the short list of who they're going to hire. And uh, I think we often put too much uh, trust into our domain knowledge. We, we put that above that testing capabilities and, and, uh, and uh, the skills of a tester. And actually, to me, it's, it's much easier most of the times to learn the domain than to learn how to be a great tester. Finding, learning the skills of being a great test, tester takes so much more time. So, w by then calling us ourselves mobile tester or financial tester or so on, we're just encouraging uh, the recruiters or the people hiring us to continue with this pattern that the domain is really, really important. Without domain knowledge, you are worthless to us. We should instead encourage them to actually find really skilled testers and, and, and put that on top of our list. And the domain knowledge is good to have, but we will be learning it. That's part of being a skilled tester, is to learn different domains and know how to learn them really fast. So let's move over to the ego lab then. Since we are, as I'm promoting myself as being better than others, I actually say, say that there are other people that are calling themselves testers, um, but they are not, not as good. They're, they're not qualified to be calling themselves testers. And, and my question to that is why are we accepting people calling themselves testers if they're not qualified to it? Why are we then forced to grab some, some other name, like a test specialist or, or super tester or something like that, to show that I'm more than a tester, instead of grabbing hold of the tester name and saying, this is what a tester is. All other people that are not qualified to, to be a tester, they are not, uh, or they, they are not able to call, call themselves testers. Shouldn't be we who are good testers. We shouldn't be the ones who actually are forced to move away from our tester name. I think that's wrong. Uh, then we are accepting that there are people in our business who are not qualified to do our to our do our job, and and we should should never acknowledge these people. Uh, and I think that we are encouraging that pattern of, of uh, by doing this, but by, by, by Distinguish ourselves with being a professional tester or whatever we, we uh, call them. And also, if you are a really good tester, I think you don't need to say it out. You don't need to, to uh, have that on your business or tell someone else that I'm a really good tester. If you really are a good tester, you should. People will know that your reputation should should be telling people 
that's not your business card. So, Mr. Fancy Name Tester, then, well, what, what, what is the problem, problem with this? I think you're not helping the community at all. I think you're, you're I think that this is a bad thing that we try to promote ourselves at various uh, things. I, th I don't really get why, why that is important for people. Uh, I think it's much, much more relevant and much more uh, valuable to strengthen the name Tesper instead of diversing from it. And also, it really rings, give me really many more warning signals when I see this uh, on, on people's business card or, or uh, their description of what they do. If, if you have, have some, some fancy name before Tesper, to me it says that you're hiding behind it. Uh, I am getting more skeptic to as a tester. I think you're hiding something. Uh, I think um, tell, it gives me some warning signs that you might not be as good as you say you are. Um, so, so to some people it actually will be uh, bad for you to have that in front, uh, that approach to, in, in, in your uh, at your business course because um, because it might not get the the reaction as, as, as what you are looking for. I think think that uh, it, it, it's easy for the fakes to to just get by and then put a fancy name before test runs and they get the fast lane in. And and it's short term. As I said, everything lives for so long time. What happens when the hype is not there any longer? What will you do then? Will you just change your business card? Uh, how, how will you be perceived by other people then that you're working with? Last year you won Agile test, but this year you are something else. Next year you call yourself a third thing. So what does that do to your reputation? Or what would you project to, to your uh, surroundings? I think, think that is a very dangerous path to go. And as we, uh, I, I talked before, also we are encouraging the people to recruit. That your title are, are the most important things. We are not encouraging the recruiters to actually look for skills, look for what's important, how to distinguish a, a good tester from from, from a, a, a bad tester or a good tester from an excellent tester. How, how it they are. Take many, we encourage them to take the easy way, just looking at your CV and looking what 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 do you call yourself, and then starting to uh, distinguish people from that. Uh, I think we, we we have to be stronger than that. We have to be more confident. We need to be able to prove our skills in in other ways. And uh, how can we do that? How how could we um, get better. There are so many things that we could get a reputation from. We could start actually sharing our knowledge, sharing our thoughts to other people, getting recognized. We could start a blog, we could comment on other blogs. There are lots of forums uh, on the internet where we can post questions, answer questions, uh, sharing our knowledge. Everyone has has knowledge and, and everyone has something to tell. And uh, if, if we keep it to ourselves, no one else will recognize us. And uh, it's about recognition. It, it's about how, how if people recognize us, we will be, get a reputation and we will be cred credible. It's about believing in our skills. If, if I never prove my skills, if I never show what I can do, how how would anyone else ever be able to assess what what I'm capable of? Make contact with people we, you'd like to learn from. There are so many people that are willing to share and to coach you. There are like James Parker doing free online coaching. I think there are several other people that are coming up with these like, uh, things. Do also, I'm doing some of it. I know John Buck is doing some, uh, and that's, there are many more. Take that opportunity. It's free. It's out there. And why, 
you learn, you get something from it. It it will take you an hour if you don't didn't get it uh, anything from it. You waste an hour, but you might have learned a lot, and then it's a really valuable hour. So take that opportunity. There are lots of local people ar around you that you might not have have any any contact with, and you don't know how, how great they are. I just uh, joined. We started up a brain builders breakfast just a couple of months ago in, in my area. Lots of new people I have never heard about before, and that are really skilled, and I learned a lot from them. And we meet every every month, once a month, and it's great. It's really easy to to just start it up, and you don't need to go abroad or go a long distance to 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 actually learn and get some something out, uh, out of it. It's, it's just next to you, most most likely. Also, one thing I found is volunteering at, at the conference. It's really, really good. Uh, once you will be recognized for do, doing something, you will most likely get a discount on the conference, so it will be cheaper for you. And also, you, you will uh, make a great network. You will extend your network. You will get to know these cool people out there. And uh, they will start to know you, and they will t you will exchange sh learnings and ideas, and you will get your reputation by doing, doing that as well. But so many more things you can do uh, instead of just putting a fancy name in front of your uh, in front of your uh, business card, and. Uh, and I think, of course, this is the hard way of doing it. It's easy to write something on a, on, on a business card or on a CV. But, but if you want to be in this business for, for, for the future, for a long time, I think uh, this is the way to go. Uh, and we need to separate us, ourselves, we who consider ourselves to be uh, good at testing. We need to separate ourselves from, from the fakes, from the people who who are actually not in it for 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 testing, and and uh, this is the way to do, to do it, I think. So we need to build our reputation then, and uh, there is also I, I forgot to mention the weekend testers, who who is an online uh, community that once uh, during the weekend they set up a testing problem and and they gather around it and. Uh, solve it and show and discuss how they would approach the testing and these different testing strategies. And a uh, great thing, you sign up online and just hook up on it. There are so many free things you can do that it's all up to yourself uh, to just take charge of and then start trying out. And if it doesn't fit you, just leave it and do something else. Just do, do something at least. So, what I'm trying to say here is Let's make it a bit harder for the fakes. Let's let's get our name, test our name back. It's ours. It's up for us who are really good at testing. It's our name. Don't let add any other people in and take the tester name from us. And with along with that name, with the tester name, is to prove our skill. So. When you call yourself a tester, you also have to prove our skills, why you are good. You, can, you should be able to demonstrate it. And also teaching the people hiring us what they should, should look for and how they can assess us. Helping them to help, to help, helping them to find better, better testers. And that will benefit us all, uh, that, that are good testers, if, if we could help the recruiters to, to distinguish between us and, and, and the fakes. So to round this off then, this is a million dollar <laughs> statement from me. We don't need a label. We need a reputation. I think the labels are for fakes. That is for people who, who actually don't have a reputation. That is people who don't have the skills to be testers. That is for, for the ones who, who will
take the easy and cheap way into our profession. What we need to do is start proving ourselves. We need to to be have a reputation. We need to be skilled and we need to work in that area. We don't need to tag along with with the people who are just in here to shine or, or use the latest passwords. We don't need to follow them on that road and encourage uh, that behavior. Uh, I think that this this is this is something dangerous for our profession. It will be harder for people, both for ourselves and for other people, to distinguish the fakes from the real testers. And uh, we we need to 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 be able to to sort sort those uh, or distinguish uh, sort them out. We need to be able to to uh, get rid of the people who are not not in in this business for real. And that's basically it, folks. And thank you so much for listening. We we have some questions. Uh, please, it's your time now. So uh, post your questions or comments on, on this. Uh, and I will try to to find them. Uh, let's see, we have Oliver Wilson here. Hi, Oliver. Uh, great that you're sharing. You're writing that I think testers define, def I think testers define themselves what they see most in their work. Testers who work m mainly on the domain define themselves as domain testers, and testers who work mainly about processes, multiple projects from various domains, call themselves process testers. I also think that testers like themselves to be defined more than just testers because it helps themselves to appear slightly different than the guy standing next. Yeah, I, I think you, you, you're spot on. Um, I think you, you're definitely right. Uh, the problem w with it, is, as I'm trying to say, is if we're just looking at what we are working with currently, I think it's very limited, limiting to our career. Just because we are working in one domain and one process today, does that really mean that I want to work with that over the next future? So I will be associated with one domain, uh, and people will remember me for, for working there if I promote myself as some telecom tester, for instance. So how, how will my ability then to, to change this domain? change to a new job thing if I'm if I'm associated with being a telecom tester. Uh, I think we need to be in our mindset broader than just to what we're working uh, with today. That doesn't mean that we don't don't have uh, that we can't say that I'm mainly working with with telecom or I'm fancy exploratory testing or agile testing or whatever it is. I, I, I just don't think that should be on top. That could be coming in our second line or third line when we present ourselves. Um, so, and this, that we distinguish each other, yeah. Uh, and my way of distinguishing me is by building a reputation instead of having a business card that does it. I, I, I strongly believe that the reputation will be a much stronger and much more credible way to distinguish ourselves. Uh, so, Manish Moody, thank you for sharing. Uh, your question is, what what is it about the managerial role? For instance, test manager, test lead, test architect. Uh, yeah, I think those those are to me, valid. Uh, uh, I, there is no fancy name in, in, in that part or no bus. Uh, it, it, as you point out, it, it's a different role, uh, and uh, that gives a description what you actually are doing, and it's not limiting yourself to to uh, today's bus or any any um, any specific domain. I think those are very, that, that that's just valid valid uh, descriptions.
I see here are th some people just pointing out like a hand or something, but there are no question in it. Uh, if you have a question, guys, please type it in as well. Theresa or Theresa, uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, let's see what uh, you're saying. Maybe people are using fancy names to send out a message to the listener on who, on which area they specialize in. It's a say agile tester, then they specialize in agile. This gives a single line introduction to the tester. Isn't this good? How else are we going to introduce ourselves and be tech in which area we specialize? Yeah, it's good as long as agile is the, is the bus. As I said, how many waterfall testers do you have today? There are lots of people who've mainly been working in waterfall processes. Where are all those guys today? Why isn't it cool to have, like, I'm a waterfall tester today? I think uh, it's a short-term way of looking at it to just, because if you present yourself as an agile tester today, what are you going to present yourself as tomorrow when there is a new buzzword out there, but you have no experience of that yet? So will you still continue presenting yourself as agile tester then? Most likely not. So you will change to something else, but you have no experience of that. Will you then start just presenting yourself as the latest buzzword? but I have no clue what it is, because that is what's selling today, right? So uh, I think uh, I think it, it's, it's, it's very dangerous. I, I, as, as I said, um, we, we, should, uh, we shouldn't hide if we're into Agile, if, have, if that's what we fancy working with, but I, we could use that in our second sentence or third sentence, that, or we could have that in a reputation that we're working with it. Uh, but, but I think it's uh, I, I think we're at limiting ourselves and I think we, we tend to get, get in trouble in the future if we put it in, in our tagline or in our Steve, uh, in a, on a business card well question for Rob Lambert, Lambert as well, hi Rob uh, Isn't the label test of value restricted in itself? Or will people know what your passion or main area of expertise is? Uh, I would say that it's not lim limited. It's that test is very broad and very open-ended uh, uh, label. And uh, how, my, what, how people will know what my passion or main expertise is, is Hopefully, from my reputation, uh, I think uh, that is stronger. Everyone can write that I'm I'm a ICQB tester. Everyone can write that I'm an agile tester, or whatever it is. How will you actually know that that is their passion or expertise anyway? Everyone can write anything on on their on their business card or claim anything, as long as we don't we 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 we, we don't prove what we actually are good at, I think there is no value or very little value in what we can call ourselves, because there are so, so many people, so many fakes out there, so many people who actually just take the latest password and just put it on, on, on their, their business card, and I, I think that, that if we, who are good testers, fall into that trap and, and doing it ourselves, we are just encouraged that, that behavior. I think I think it's uh, it's it's bad for for us uh, as testers to do that. So I have a question from uh, Ben Kelly as well. Hi Ben. How do you see the role of test management needing to change in order to accommodate the sort of changes you are talking to? I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not sure if it's test management. Uh, they are part of it, but, but I think that the problem lies in more, more, more mostly in ourselves. 
uh, as test of what we project to our uh, surroundings, or to the world. And also I think that one, the problem lies also in the recruiting, the people hiring us, that they are falling into this trap and they are, uh, they are uh, taking the easy way. It's easier to hire an agile tester than to actually find out if he's really an agile tester, have the skills for it. Uh, I'm going on at, and chatting at agile tests quite a lot. It's just an example. I don't have any more particular things against, against agile tests than other uh, types of testers. So I'm just using this as an example. So, so, so I think we need to train the people that are hiring testers. So they need to be more skilled and more aware of what they are looking for and how to assess skills instead of looking for us only. Uh, we have a question from Piotr. Uh, hi. I, I, I think that testers can also develop career by participation in management opportunities like new ventures. Uh, absolutely. I, I completely agree. Uh, I mean, we can do careers uh, in many different ways, and I think that, uh, that's a vari variety of participation in several different types of uh, um, companies. Uh, every Size you're on, and every 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 position you're in, you will learn something. You have the, at least you have the opportunity to learn something good from it, and uh, it's up it's up to everyone that um, if if you want to learn and 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 take the opportunity, or if you just would just say that, oh no, this is the the wrong domain for me. I, I can't work here, so I will just sit down and be mumbling instead of actually try to learn it. Uh, Gustav Olsson is asking one question, I have one comment. Hi Gustav. Uh, at your testers, what for testers? I can't be wrong to develop yourself along with the market and the methods that are popular and express that in the just a thought. No, I completely agree. Uh, of, of course we need to uh, develop along the, the industry. But the issue I have with it is that if I promote myself as only being able, being an agile tester, I'm excluding myself from all other uh, processes. And is that what I want to do? I don't fancy it to me at least. Uh, it's not what... Uh, I, I'm broader than that. Uh, I, I think it's it's a constraint in our, our in our learning ability. It puts a constraint to our learning ability. If you're an agile tester, will you actually move along with the market and the new popular uh, methods in the future? Because you're promoting yourself as an agile tester, will you not be stuck in the agile? Um, Agile space or, or uh, socket. Then, how, how should you? What what encourages you to move ar along to other me if you already define yourself as as a, a agile tester in that case? AJ, uh, hi AJ. Hi, thanks for the webinar mentioning of the. Weekend tester. I'm AJ, sorry for not pronouncing your last name, from Bangalore, India. Uh, I don't think test, I, don't you think all tests, once again, <laughs> don't you think all these fancy names were invited by the organizations? Each organization ha has its own way of naming their testers. Yes, I think that is a very big part of it. But yes, but why should we fall into that? Uh, shouldn't you be just 
because we get an in invitation, should we just tag along with it? Uh, what happens if you get several invitations? Do you actually have to choose one of them? Then can't you work with them uh, with them all? Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely think that the the commu you, each community wants to grant themselves and and they want to get their crowd and uh, that their followers and uh, that 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 that's one one part of it definitely. Scott Hawkins, hi Scott. How do you define a fake? How I define a fake is someone who is uh, not into this profession to learn. If they are not into this profession to uh, get better, uh, they are. There are lots of people who are uh, here to what should I say, doing the easy job, uh, just. Uh, they're not passionate about what they're doing. They are not uh, actually see themselves as a career in testing. They are uh, just uh, taking their paycheck because testing is to them easy, easy work. Uh, a fake is someone who is trying to project some, something else uh, to someone that they are or something that they they actually. Not, don't or not or um, and then that is what I mean when we call ourselves all these fancy names that it's so easy for people to just tag along and start using these names but I come across lots of people that have no clue what when you dig into deeper about if, if a process or a domain or so on but they still call themselves that, or you call yourself a senior tester after two, three years of testing. So, uh, what are senior to compared to what? Uh, it's it's a selling argument for, for mostly for the consultant company. Um, I think that is those kind of things are fake when you project something else to your surroundings uh, that you actually can't back up. So, Matthew Steer. Hi, Matthew. Uh, do you think requirement agents have a part to play in this problem? What should I do? I think requirement agents have a big part of uh, this problem. I think requirement agencies, many of them, not all, many of them have no clue what they are looking for. Um, when they are hiring a test, they, don't, they have, have no ability to assess the success skilled test or good test or, or not. Uh, they are, if you're looking at many of the, the ads out there, they are uh, uh, just so looking for the certification people, they are looking for the domain knowledge, they are looking for uh, the processes. Yes, uh, they, they really need to shape up their, their game to, to be uh, uh, to, to not being a part of this problem. So, Mohinder Kosla. Uh, hi. Should we call ourselves test reporters? How would that go down with the testing community? Test reporter. Uh, I don't really know what a test reporter is, but uh, I, do, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe you could uh, define or uh, elaborate a bit more on, on the term test reporter. Can strain. I can. To say that putting just tester as your title is na naive. Having worked many years ago in the recruitment industry, I can tell you that when recruiters look through CVs, they are 
may be looking for an agile test, so they will start CVs, the Fed yes tester, and look at agile test to see results. If the title then goes out of fashion, people move on to learn new skills, the next same test or area. What about the t title PL1 programmer? When was the, uh, when was that, that went out of fashion? Didn't they learn new skills and change the title? Perhaps they became COBOL programmers or Java programmers. Remember that this means you must convey your message in the shortest possible way. I, I see what you're saying. Uh, and, but what I'm trying to do also is actually change the, the pattern of recruitment industry because I think they're not doing a good job. Uh, and if we good testers would call ourselves testers and the recruiters still look, are looking for agile tests of them, they will end up with crap. And in the long term, if they continue looking for the agile testers, they will just uh, end up with more crap. And some along the way, they will actually start asking why this is happening. And uh, I hope that, that they at some point stop looking for the, for the skills instead of the latest password. And they will find this bunch of just testers and they're starting to wonder how can we assess this, which ones are good of this and which ones are not. And they, we will start changing the, the recruitment pattern. Uh, and, uh, and just because recruitments are, are working one way today, I, think, I don't think we should fall into that, that pattern and, and encourage it because I, I don't think it, it benefits us. I think it's uh, working against us today. Uh, and I'm trying to, to change it. Oliver, once again. I think the problem is that we know that other testers might know your reputation. But if you try to sell yourself to business people who doesn't know your reputation, then how to tell them in a few words that the expertise area besides using your title. That is true. Uh, that, is, that is a problem. Uh, and w what I'm hoping for and, and what I try to do is, is actually get a few sentences with them so I can explain myself uh, and not just putting it on. on. I, I try not to change my business code. I actually have some business codes calling myself uh, senior test or something like that or whatever it might be. So I, I've been been doing that those kind of things before as well. Uh, but I, I come come around that it's it's quite frustrating and quite hard to just print out new business cards every now and then. Uh, and all, always try to keep up which card I gave to two to, to people. So what what am am I projecting? It's much easier to just have a general title and then get the opportunity to, to, des to describe myself or present myself. Uh, and then I can present in that way, in that manner, I, I like to be, be, uh, be observed by, by, by the one I, I present, present myself to. It's giving me more flexibility, I think. And it don't, doesn't put constraints on, on my learning ability. And that is one major objection and problem I have with this, is that it's just constraining me in my way of, of learning. Um, thanks very much, Henrik. I think that's all the questions. Quite a lot of questions today. I think it was a, such a good presentation. It, it stimulated a lot of discussion and a lot of thoughts from the people attending. So thank you very much for that. I also see there's quite a lot of conversation going on on, uh, on Twitter also. If people look on the, the Eurostar profile, there's a lot of people with feedback on the, on the webinar. Um, if anyone doesn't have another question, I, I'd just like to thank Henrik for what was a great presentation and to thank everyone that attended today um, to make a great presentation with the questions at the, at the end. And also just to remind everyone that our recording of this webinar will be available more than likely early next week. And we will email everyone that registered or attended today with a link to this uh, webinar archive recording. 
Um, just before you log off, just to let you know that also on the Eurostar website we have a couple of things going on at the moment. You can download a free ebook from the Eurostar homepage from Ziegler Van Hesse and a lucky shot at Agile. But we also have the Blogstar competition running where you can just go to the Eurostar blog and you can see a number of contestants blogging about different test issues and their thoughts on that. Um, again, I'd like to thank Henrik for today, a great presentation, so thank you, Henrik. And just to remind everybody to log off and to hang up their telephones, the webinar is now over, and we hope to see you at a future Eurostar webinar. Thank you very much.